As a women's health professional, you already know the value in cycle tracking, but are you equipped to support your clients with complex cycle issues? Do you know how to read complex menstrual cycle charts? Were you ever taught specific step-by-step protocols to deal with irregular bleeding patterns, abnormal cervical mucus, chaotic basal body temperatures, and progesterone issues? That's where FAM comes in. The Fertility Awareness Mastery Mentorship Program is designed specifically for women's health professionals with busy practices. We've cut out all the fluff so we can be laser focused on what you need to serve your clients better. Registration is now open for the next class of FAM. Classes start toward the end of June and early bird registration is open until June 14th. Apply today at fertilityfriday.com slash famlive. That's fertilityfriday.com slash F-A-M-M-L-I-V-E. This is the Fertility Friday podcast, episode number 526. Today, I'm sharing a brand new episode with two guests, Alexandra Pope and Shawnee Hugo Wurlitzer. They've been on the podcast before, but it has been quite a few years. They were previously in episode 150 and also episode 333. In today's episode, we are touching on one of the topics in their most recent book, Wise Power, which is a follow-up to their first book together, Wild Power. And what we're talking about today is we're diving into this period of time that leads up to our last period. So we often refer to that period of time as perimenopause or premenopause. And it is different to actual menopause, which refers to your last official period. And one of the things that I love about this conversation and other conversations that I've had with Shani and Alexandra is that we talk about this phase in a positive way. You know, we talk about it as a natural stage of the life cycle. When you are a woman and you're of reproductive age, eventually we're all going to stop menstruating. However, it's not a bad thing. It's actually part of what is supposed to happen. It's part of the natural flow of things, if you will. So I really enjoyed today's episode. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. And let me just share a little bit about Alexandra and Shawnee, if you're not yet familiar with their work. Alexandra and Shawnee are the co-founders of Red School and co-authors of the iconic and hugely celebrated book from Hay House, Wild Power, and their latest book, Wise Power. They are pioneering the new emerging field of menstruality, creating a new lexicon and approach to women's health and well-being, creativity and leadership, and spiritual life based on the power of our menstruality consciousness. Between them, they bring over 60 years of experience, and today they teach worldwide on the psycho-spiritual process of maturation that unfolds from menarche to menopause and beyond. They're committed to training the menstruality leaders of the future. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's episode. And I'm so excited to be back here on the podcast with Shawnee Hugo Wurlitzer and Alexandra Pope, the authors of Wild Power and Wise Power, their newest book. So excited to have you back on the show. Welcome. Lovely to be here, Lisa. We're we're just so up for this and ready to talk to you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, we just had the most incredible session in our Fertility Awareness Mastery Mentorship Program. I was sharing with you this morning that everybody really loved it. And I think one of the reasons is because, as you both know, I've I've really focused my work on the, the very physical aspects of the menstrual cycle. And so I'm deep into that biological stuff, right? Which is important, but the emotional kind of realities of it are equally important and they really inform our understanding. And so the feedback that I had from our practitioners was just, it it really makes it full. You know what I mean? Like it really completes the thought. Yeah. Mm. So We were chatting in our little discussion beforehand, and I, one of the topics, a similar topic that I wanted to to kind of jump into today is just this lead up 
to the main event, which is menopause. So I'd love for you to just jump in and, and share the difference. We were just talking about how so many people don't even know that, that you know, they, they use the word menopause, but they don't realize that there's distinct stages. And I'd also like to just dive into the whole topic of what that lead up is like, you know, what we're told about it, what we're told it's going to be like, how many people dread it versus what it could be like if we were better informed. So just a softball question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just lay it all out there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so good. I, I love um, what Tony, you... Tony, can I just come in here? I'm just wondering whether... I, I, I had this sort of inclination to sort of set it up by just naming, talking about what happens at menopause very briefly, the, the sort of transformation just to put the lead up in context yeah definitely let's do that and um and before we go there just to come to the bit about your work lisa which is so focused on the physical aspect of being a cyclical being and then our work which is focused on menstruality which is all about the psychological emotional and spiritual layer of that experience and just how necessary both of those pieces are, as you said, it kind of gives this fuller picture. And I think I said in in your in that that call, it's like two slices of the bread in the sandwich. You know, this physical layer which builds body literacy, and then this psychological, emotional, energetic layer which builds emotional literacy. And together they make this wonderful kind of sandwich of what it how, what it means to be a cyclical being and actually how to live in deep alignment with our cyclical nature for wellness, for emotional and mental health and for creative fulfillment so that we're really being held by the intelligence of our bodies and the, and the sort of animating force that is creating this rhythmic life that we so deeply inhabit as menstruating humans. So I love that you started with that. Yes, this this journey to menopause, and I'm going to hand over to Alexandra in a moment to speak about menopause because she is, of course, post-menopause, and I myself am in my late 40s, 47. So I'm in the kind of lead up to menopause, what you're calling pre-menopause, so we're holding different places within us. And I know, Lisa, you're in a kind of, you're a little bit younger than me, but also entering this decade of life before menopause happens. And it's a whole journey that beautifully starts at our first bleed. It starts with menarche. And there's a very rich and precise unfolding that happens through the different stages of our lives culminating at menopause so there's a, a full journey that happens and if we take menopause out of that context a lot of what happens at menopause doesn't make sense and can be very easily misunderstood misconstrued and mishandled so yeah I'm looking forward to unpacking this so Alexandra why, why don't you dive into this piece about the destination, so to speak. Yes, the destination of our menstruating years on an on an emotional or a sort of psycho spiritual level. I am actually just relishing everything you have just spoken, Shani. The whole context that you've set, and that you, this important point that you've made about menopause sits on a continuum, and and when menopause I always feel like men the way menopause is portrayed in our society is that there's this phenomena floating out in space that one day you crash into and you go what the <laughs> so it's come out of nowhere you know <laughs> whereas it's the final stage of our menstruating years and when you are connected into the biology, the physical aspects of your cycle, and then this next layer of the emotional. And when, so when you're really embedded in that and charting that, following that, menopause, you unfold into menopause. 
And what happens at menopause, psychologically speaking, is that you're actually going to go through an enormous, uh, it's quite melodramatic, death and rebirth. It, you're coming to the end of something. You're coming to a journey that you have been, it's the culmination of a journey that you have been growing into. So when, at this emotional level of work, the cycle is uh, deepening you into yourself. It's helping you to get you to know yourself more and more and what you're really about. And, you know, each decade of your life, there is this lovely refinement that goes on. And then something comes to a head at menopause in a very big and a very powerful way. And we call menopause an awakening. We actually call it a spiritual awakening. It is profoundly that. And it's going to demand something of you. And But the thing is, you are prepared for that moment when you are rooted in your cycle. And that awakening involves you having to examine all aspects of your life to examine what is in and what is out. So it's a time of real psychological house cleaning and transformation in which you are actually going to literally, it's like your whole psyche is being rewired for a whole new life post-menopause. And this post-menopause life is you utterly aligned with who you are, what you're about, what you're here to serve. So you're stepping into something very powerful post-menopause. But to get to that place, you have to go through a psychological rewiring. And when we're not prepared or taught about this rewiring, it feels like all hell has broken loose. It actually feels like the end. And thrown into that is this fact of getting older in inverted commas, and all the hideous negatives around being particularly an older woman and the feeling of no longer being relevant, having the same kind of power. So there's a whole lot of other things mixed in there. But at its heart is a rewiring of your whole being to set you up for a very aligned, powerful and very creative, and can I say, very productive postmenopause life, if you want that. Yeah. And, and what's happening, you know, physiologically is underpinning all of this. We're going from being cyclical and being held in a fertile body to suddenly having all of our hormones shift, our our chemistry change at such a fundamental level coming into this place where we are no longer cyclical in this way. And so there's a real shift of power that happens within us from being these like fertile reproductive beings to now having this very other kind of power, which Alexandra is describing as real creative power, a sort of worldly authority or leadership that we can't access before we hit that stage of our lives. And if you know any really happening older, older women, as I do, case in point, Alexandra, there's a certain kind of authority that postmenopausal women have, which you just don't want to mess with, in my opinion. They really do know how to kick butt. So it's, it's, it is a, it's a very significant gear change and life change that in a way brings us into just a whole other way of being in the world and a different kind of responsibility that we have in the world. So yes, it's really good that you've stated all that, Alexandra, because I think so much of the cultural conversation is just about menopause as being a health condition and a health crisis and without any recognition of uh, what is unfolding and that it isn't a medical condition, it is a natural organic shift that is allowing for us to step into a new life phase with a new kind of 
alignment and power and creative capacity. And the health crisis piece is, well, I think we could, we're going to need to talk about that in this conversation <laughs> because that's very real for many people. Well, so there's so many things I could say because everything you said is so rich. I always love having these conversations with both of you. One of the things that strikes me the most, I think, for, especially for someone who might be a newer listener who hasn't necessarily heard some of our prior interviews before, is how positive we are speaking about this topic. In this day and age, it's almost that you never hear anybody talking about this stage of life in a positive way and talking about how the shift, once you've kind of gone through that transition, what it adds to your life. It's only talking about what, what it takes away. But Alexandra, you were talking about what it adds to your life and how it changes. And Shani, I really resonate with what you're saying because I always joke that, I mean, man, when I go through the stage, like when I actually am post-menopause, watch out, right? Because I'm already fiery. So it's, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> it's going to be fun. I mean, I think that whenever you do interact with women who've really embraced this stage, they do have this, like they just lose their filter. They're not afraid to say things anymore. They're just so much in their power, which is, I, I imagine why you so rightly titled your book, Wise Power, because mm -hmm. this is a whole thing, right? Yes. So I would love to get into some of those symptoms. So another thought that I wanted to share with you, so I'll try to make it make sense. One of the practitioners made a really interesting comment after our, you know, when you did your uh, wonderful presentation for us. And she made this parallel, you know, between the menstrual cycle and how we go through these phases and how prior to menstruation, you could think of that as like your autumn and then the winter would be the menstruation, how our energy changes and all of that. She mentioned that she had struggled with PMS, like PMS symptoms quite severe. And she felt that you had made this comparison in a, in a much larger way to this pre-menopause stage as similar to that autumn. And as we cycle, for those of us who are cycling naturally, who are not medicated, you do have to learn to negotiate this stage and learn that there's a difference between the natural emotional shifts that you go through when you're healthy, that are not problematic, that are not causing you to not be able to go to work and function, but they do, your emotions do shift, your energy does shift. So really negotiating that difference between what is normal for this stage and what is problematic. So I feel like that could be an interesting way to, to jump into this concept of you know, premenopause is a health condition, all these symptoms, we're expecting to have all of these things. Well, obviously, it's a time of change and shifting. Alexandra, what you were saying is that it's this very profound shift that's happening. We're moving from, like you said, being fertile and being able to have children to a different stage now. So there will be some changes. <laughs> but I guess the the question out of that is, how do we then start to understand that it's not all problematic? And how do we understand the difference between potentially, dare I say, a healthy premenopause transition and one where you're not, you know, you're not nourished or whatever's going on, you're, you're not taking care of yourself and, and how that could be playing into those symptoms? Mm, that's a very, very good question. And I think we would possibly need to uh, back up a little to unpack something here because there's not a blanket answer that we can give because it's very much about each person coming to know themselves, learning to listen to their body, their needs, what's changing in them and how to tend to that. Where symptoms tend to happen is where we are not cooperating with our changing energy, our changing body, our changing needs. So if we just take the menstrual cycle as a really good little like template for what's happening in the larger cycle from menarche to menopause, that's going to help shed some light. So as you described there, and for people who don't know, each 
season or each phase of the menstrual cycle, we are likened to a different season. So menstruation is your inner winter, pre-ov is your inner spring, ovulation, your inner summer, and the premenstruum, your inner autumn. So bearing that in mind that we kind of move through these inner seasons each menstrual month, we can then take understanding and sort of zoom out into our arc, into this menstruality arc, and actually see that those seasons play out in much the same way through our 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. Alexandra, do you want to sort of just describe that, the seasons of our menstruating years, and then we can get more specifically into answering your question, I think, Lisa. Mm. So I, I, the, our 20s, our late teens and our 20s are very much in a, our springtime of our menstruating years. And into our 30s, we come, we sort of crest into the summer season of our menstruating years. And our 40s are that sort of turning point, you know, from summer to autumn where, you know, the energy shift. <laughs> And we see that as the autumn of our menstruating years. And so our 40s, uh, the energies of our 40s are a little bit equivalent to the energies of the autumn of our menstrual cycle. You know, the, the kinds of experiences that come up in our pre in that phase, the premenstrual phase will be echoed in our 40s to some extent, depending on, you know, health, well-being and so on. And that in our the cycle of our menstruating years, when we come into our 50s, it, well, when we come into menopause, that is the ending. It is the winter of our menstruating years. Mm. And um, each season of our menstruating years has a, a different quality or energy to it. And um, but I, I always like to think in your 20s and 30s, there's in some ways, there's not a huge amount of difference because there's a, a fair amount of energy in the bank, you know. And so it has that quality of invincibility, you know, and I can keep going forever. And there's something about when you come into your 40s, a bit like coming into the premenstrual phase where you suddenly notice, woof your energy drops and suddenly you start to get irritable and you go, oh, you know, what's it all about? And suddenly the shine comes off everything. Yeah, that, that <laughs> bubble, that illusion of invincibility is <laughs> Yeah, and It is the sort of, in our um, journey to menopause, if we think about our 40s, I think so much of the distress that starts to happen for people in their 40s where they then begin to say oh my god this is menopause and I want to say no 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 you've got your whole 40s yes it's not menopause what it is is you are just discovering you're not invincible anymore and you cannot just push 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 and ignore your body your needs in the way you could before you could get away with it before not that it was good getting away with it, ultimately, can I say. I mean, there is a price to pay for just getting away with it in our 20s and 30s. And, and maybe it's, you pay that price in your 40s. That is actually when, you know, the uh, bailiff comes to collect the debt in your 40s. So it is a real life you've lived thus far, it's sort of, which sounds cruel and harsh. Um, that that's the nature of cyclical wisdom. You know, nothing leads to something. There's a consequence unfolding from each action. And we receive the report card in our forties. Yeah, I interrupted you. Go on. No, it's, it's great what you're saying, Shani. A moment where you know we start shift in our energies and also. A shift on life it's like not quite so rose tinted those bigger because of course you stay i'm getting old old yet just saying from where i am <laughs> but when you're 40 it feels like you're getting older <laughs> 
And so these big questions start to come up and then your cycle isn't quite so kind of smooth as it was before. Your energy is not quite the same and the shine is going off things. Instead of going, oh, my God, this is menopause, I want everybody to go, oh, wow, I am changing. And my needs are changing. I'm coming into a different life stage. And I have to respond to myself differently. So my body is now speaking to me about something deeper, about my needs, something about my overall health, how I'm doing, and what's important to me. So it's like this marvelous little reality check moment. And if you can just meet any sort of kind of difficult or troublesome things that might show themselves, I don't want to say this is carte blanche, on the contrary we're all uh, singular and unique but if you are encountering challenges to meet them and ask yourself wow what's needed here what what am, what care do i have to give myself what am i asked to look at and examine and if you can meet that and uh, allow us and adjust to the person you're becoming where you suddenly find actually you can't pull an all nighter You can't work late and then have to get up at crack of dawn and head off again. You just, it doesn't work like that anymore. If you could start to recognize that, you come into a new pattern or rhythm with yourself. And that is, it's like you come into the flow of the 40s, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I want to just kind of draw a, a parallel here because in, you know, from sort of, it's different for everyone, but from the end of your thirties into your forties, your hormones do begin to shift. There is a very gradual incremental hormonal change that is happening, which culminates at menopause, just as in the menstrual cycle, you are changing through the premenstruum, but then there is a very distinct release relief bleeding that happens at the end of that, which is menstruation, your inner winter, but there are two very distinct things going on here. And it's really helpful in terms of our self-care and self-understanding not to combine or confuse or mess, mush those things together. So this life phase of the 40s that we're talking about, many people refer to this as perimenopause. But equally, many people seem to be using the word perimenopause to also mean menopause. And it's our understanding that these are two very, very different psychological, emotional experiences that are happening. Menopause, you know, the physical marker of that is the cessation of periods. But around that time, for like two to five years, around the end of bleeding, you are going through this death and rebirth process, this inner winter. And that's a very distinct thing, which Alexandra spoke about earlier. And then in the lead up to that, you're going through this inner autumn, which is this gear change, which is this preparation for the winter that's coming. And we all understand this when we look at nature. You know, you don't go from summer to winter. The leaves need to shed in order to get to that place where the, you know, the trees can rest and fully replenish and restore. There is, you know, there's a significant thing that happens on the way to that quiet of winter. And this thing that Alexandra was talking about of how we change is so important to understand that our body doesn't metabolize stress in the way that it could or did in the previous life stages that we were in. And we all understand, I think, how stress affects us on all levels, physically, mentally, emotionally. We could say that stress underlies all health conditions. And so if we aren't cooperating with this changing life phase, we are really living in a state of survival, in a stress state, And the kinds of things we experience from emotional reactivity, overwhelm, anxiety, physical health conditions, even, dare I say, irregular disrupted cycles, 
those things are connected to the stress and the not cooperating with what you know, what our body is asking of us. So to your question, Lisa, like how do we know the difference between what is normal in terms of the disruption, because there is a disruption that happens in our 40s versus like really like not okay, that, that needs tending. And um, Shani, I'm yes. going to ask that question of you because you are. Yeah, I, I was sort of thinking of it in terms of myself. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because I feel fantastic in my 40s. Yes. I mean, I, I really do. I feel absolutely fantastic. I take care of myself. So I was joking with Alexandra this morning. I said, if the me of my 20s could see what I do today to look after myself, I would not believe it. You know, I've taken self-care to a whole other level and it it's paying off not only in terms of how well I feel physically, my health is fantastic. I feel fitter, stronger. Emotionally, I have many days that are, you know, the base note is joy and, and creative pleasure. I'm really living my calling. I feel very fulfilled. And I'm not saying it's all roses. There's an equal intensity in my life. There is equal challenge. In fact, the challenges that I'm up against are also bigger than I've ever faced before. But the difference is I have a newfound maturity with them, or let's say I'm growing greater and greater maturity with the challenges that I'm facing. I'm sort of meeting the challenges as an invitation to grow up is probably the simplest way I could say it. So that has been my experience. And it took me a while. You know, when I first hit my 40s, I really wobbled, um, very much like coming off the high of the inner summer into the inner autumn. It's hard to break the momentum of that kind of fast living and the, you know, I can do anything, I can do it all for everyone kind of way of being. So like I hit my 40s with a bit of a judder. But then gradually and incrementally, as I've gotten into my 40s, I have found my flow with it. And that's what you were saying, Alexandra, you can come into the flow of your 40s. And this is also true of the premenstrual, I just want to say. And we know many people who have turned PMS around in just this way. If you respect your inner autumn and you respect your needs in your inner autumn, that disturbance is turned into power. And that's what I have felt. You know, I've really felt my authority, my capacity for love expand, my creative capacity expand. That's part of the flow of coming into your into your 40s, but it takes inner work and a huge amount of self-care. Mm -hmm. I, I want to just come in on that theme there uh, in responding to your question, Lisa, which is that it's this, I think there's this amazing work of acceptance of yourself that goes on in your 40s. I'd say that underlies it all, is just growing in your recognition more and more of your own nature and loving yourself more and more. And maybe loving is too strong sometimes, but just growing a greater confidence or in your own voice in your own authority and I actually often talk about mastery I think the 40s are about coming into a real sense of mastery with yourself like feeling capable and confident and and at the sort of peak of your game in terms of what your work is and things like that but also with that mastery in that mastery is a relishing of yourself, a real enjoyment. It's like really good, healthy ego, Lisa. <laughs> That's what you're growing. And I mean, I see it in you, Shani. It's just, you know, it's amazing. It's fantastic. And you want to build that healthy sense of ego because, of course, at menopause, it's going to get dented a little. And if, if it's not 
a little bit sturdy, that denting doesn't feel quite so great. <laughs> Attention women's health professionals, the next round of FAM is just around the corner. FAM is the perfect program for busy women's health professionals who want to offer fertility awareness charting support in their practice. FAM cuts out all the fluff and focuses only on what you need to serve your clients better. Each module, homework assignment, in-class training, and chart review session is there for a reason. Where will you be nine months from now? With a FAM certification, you'll have a brand new skill set that will allow you to use the menstrual cycle as a diagnostic tool and vital sign in your practice. Your confidence in analyzing and interpreting menstrual cycle charts will be at a level you can't even imagine today. And you'll have a brand new offering in your business that will allow you to reach more clients. This knowledge is truly life-changing. Transform your practice in nine months. You won't regret it. Join us this year in FAM. Head over to fertilityfriday.com slash famlive to apply today. That's fertilityfriday.com slash F-A-M-M-L-I-V-E. And now it's time to get back to today's episode. I mean, again, there's, there's so much I could say. We could have this conversation for not even like a day. We could have it over like a weekend. <laughs> But I think that what my experience has been, I've had a variety of clients over the years, some who have had some experience charting and some who had very little. And in my humble opinion, based on my anecdotal experiences, I feel like when a woman has just, for example, hypothetically, if a woman is on birth control for her entire 20s and 30s and 40s, that really doesn't set you up for dealing with the stage. So I've experienced women who have been on birth control most of their lives, and then maybe they have a child later in life. And so that that was the whole thing, learning to deal with the having a baby and that transition. But then when they come out, like when they're in postpartum and they start cycling again, maybe their partner gets snipped, so they no longer need the birth control. And all of a sudden they're cycling. But this is like the first time that they're cycling as adult women. And it just, it's like a wave in the ocean. It just takes them out because it's, they just don't have the experience dealing with this cyclical shift. And in, we live in a world that's very much like we need that, the, the remedy right now. <laughs> we don't have any patience. But what I have found, and I think, I feel like the three of us, for example, can kind of take it for granted to some degree because we cycled. We cycled all these years. We kind of had like we were on the going with my ocean analogy, like we're in the boat, like the waves didn't necessarily need to be catastrophic because we were able to navigate while they were still kind of small and we're kind of doing our thing. And you really do learn like your menstrual cycle is a teacher. I just came off of a very, very stressful couple of years of my life, more stress than I've ever experienced. And during that time, there were shifts in my cycle. <laughs> and, you know, I even shared on the podcast, like, I had this one cycle that was like really long. And then I had this other cycle where I had spawning and that's not something that I normally experience. So for me, that was like the boat going a little to the left. <laughs> and for me, kind of being like, okay, back to the self-care, right? So this is the difference in my opinion. You know, this is the difference. Like when you are cycling, and you have not just cycling, cycling with the literacy, tracking, understanding, seeing the changes in your luteal phase, the changes, like being aware of the changes and seeing how they tie into how you live your life. That is teaching you. So I am of the opinion, even though I'm not quite at the stage that you're at, Shani, for example, that without that teaching, without that then when you get into the 40s and the boat starts to rock, you have no experience dealing with it. And this is a big topic. We won't have enough time to like do it justice in, in the time that we have left in this conversation. But, you know, I think that it's an interesting conversation to have about the role of hormone replacement therapy. It seems like a lot of people are jumping in, which is fine. You know, I don't want people to feel bad. I, I don't want people to struggle with all of these symptoms. I don't want someone to bleed for 60 days straight, you know, it can be a really rough time. But back to what you were saying, Shani, about 
if you're experiencing all of this stuff, it likely means that you're really kind of resisting the changes that you probably need to make in order to find that equilibrium. So that's a thought to share, not much of a question, but I'm sure that both of you have a comment on that. It's brilliantly said. Yeah, I really, I really like that boat analogy. Yeah, it's like suddenly, if you're suddenly coming off hormonal contraception, for instance, it's like being thrown into a, a rough sea. Whereas, you know, you've been learning to sail through your menstruation years. <laughs> And, you know, the waters get a bit choppy and, and you kind of, you're skilled up, you know, how to lean this way and that way and tweak this and do that and and sort of meet that wave. It's a brilliant mm. change. Yeah. And, and to the title of your book, which I absolutely love, which is Fifth Vital Sign, I think that's also a really key factor in this, Lisa, is that you know, for somebody who has been tracking their cycle and paying attention, they've built this relationship of listening and responding to the sign and signal that, you know, their menstrual cycle is because our cycles are a stress sensitive system and they are really there. Our cycle is really there to let us know actually how we're going with our, with stress and with our lives and with our health. And rather than seeing the disruptions physically in your 40s as a sign of like inevitable decline, to actually read it as feedback for new ways of tending to your health and new ways of tending to the levels of stress that you might be negotiating. And that's, I think, something that is really, really overlooked. I hear it so often. People notice cycle changes, uh, physical symptoms, and immediately they just assume that this is par for the course and that this is what happens in your 40s. It is entirely possible to have a healthy, regular menstrual cycle right the way until the day you stop bleeding. It's not inevitable that your cycles change and it's not inevitable that you have heavy bleeding or any of the number of things that happen. Those, those, That's all health feedback. And I think that's something that's often misunderstood. Well, as you were saying that, the way my mind works, it's like, that was like food. Like that was like water, like in the desert when you were saying those things, right? Because that's like the whole point. That's why I've been on this podcast for 10 years talking about the menstrual cycle yes. as the vital sign. That's why, yes. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is why we're here. Right? Because we hit the punchline. <laughs> yes. yes. But honestly, this is the whole thing. So because I have not yet gone through this experience, I can't say that I have firsthand experience. You know, it's, it's, it is different to be able to speak to things from that place of experience. But I've had many, many, many experiences with clients in that age category who are experiencing catastrophic symptoms, symptoms that cause doctors to want to give women hysterectomies, because <laughs> that's the only option, right? I mean, it's not being very tongue in cheek here, but when you're bleeding, for example, for months on end without stopping, th these are things that cause them to want to do surgeries and, and things that, that are very, very drastic. And what you said, Shawnee, about it's not inevitable that we go through these things, yet when women are in that stage and they experience some of these challenges, we're not trained to take it as feedback. We're not trained to think of our bodies, particularly our menstrual cycle, as a fully functioning part of our body. We're not trained to think of this stage, the premenopause, as a natural transition. We're not even trained to think that menopause is a natural state. Yeah. We're trained to think that it's inherently problematic. And any little symptom means that you have a health problem, like you said, and that we need to get rid of all the symptoms so that we like, so that we can just pretend like we're still in our thirties, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's, it's really interesting because I just love what you said, Shani. If we, if we really thought of our menstrual cycle differently, if we shifted our mindset and thought of it as a vital sign and thought of these symptoms as feedback. And if we knew that it was possible to go through our forties and not be wrecked by all of these symptoms, if we were taught to listen to our bodies 
And when you have the boat shipped in up, like in my case, I knew exactly why I had those cycles that were, it was very, like I said, very stressful time of my life. And, you know, I'll give an example. I was, I was, um, a family member was, was not well. And so we went to this, we went to Mexico <laughs> and for two weeks, I was a vegetarian <laughs> because that was the diet that was served there. And so all of a sudden I have like, you know, half the protein that I normally have. And so, you know, for example, that particular cycle ended up being quite long. But then when I, it was a very interesting to see. Fascinating. One of the things that's interesting about this kind of body literacy concept is it wasn't like I was experiencing this and, and freaking out and thinking, what's going on? Like I knew it was going on. <laughs> so I was just kind of watching it, like eating popcorn, you know, what's going on? How is this going to play out? But you you learn every time you experience something like that. You learn what your body really needs. You learn what's more optimal for your body. And I saw that. And then when I was able to be back in my space and into eating my normal things and all of that, back to my normal routine, I was able to bring it back into line. You know, what if we could do that with the premenopause space? See that that's that's what's meant to happen. <laughs> it's just so well articulated. Uh, Lisa, and I also want to add here that this isn't just about preparing for menopause. This is actually about setting yourself up for postmenopause life. Because self care actually goes up a notch again. And you really want to get your house in order, metaphorical house in order, health house in order, as best you can within the context of your life. Because I realize that. People's situations are all so diverse and we're not all as resourced as we would like to be or can be because of our life circumstances. So we just do our best. But having this knowledge, having this recognition and really building, holding a positive thinking about menopause is actually setting yourself up for a very aligned and healthy life post-menopause so there's a whole continuum at work here it's really important to remember that oh god there's so much I could say I could just keep going and going here I'm actually thinking of my own experience coming into menopause and I had a very interesting thing happen for me which is that I actually suffered with severe health problems for a lot of my life and so I had developed um, I had things like chronic fatigue and so on and I had uh, developed really strong healthcare practices, you know, and was doing quite well. And what was interesting was coming into my 40s and coming, I went through menopause, maybe around 53, something like that. But I never at any moment used the word menopause. I just was staying with the experience I was having, which is my cycles started to be just become longer. I had had insomnia way back in my 30s. So in my 40s, where everything was improving, I was happy, right? I was very happy. I was getting some sleep. <laughs> and I actually did not have any symptoms like hot flashes, flushes, flashes, I think they said America, <laughs> um, until I was coming out of menopause and I had just moved countries and I was tired. <laughs> I was, you know, that, that required something. I had moved, shifted from Australia back to the UK and I completely changed my whole life, given up my career and was going to start something completely different. This is absolutely par for the course for menopause, by the way. You change everything, which is precisely what I did. But it was quite demanding. And it was then that I started to get hot flushes, but that was the only thing that was really problematic. And so what I'm really speaking to here is I was someone with poor health, but I had grown very strong self-care practices. I was very disciplined about what I needed to be well. And these, and it turned out that these were all the things that I needed to be well going through menopause. So yes, it, it, you can really, you can take charge of something here. You don't have to be at the mercy of this. I never at any point felt the mercy of something. Actually, I also felt ready. I was, I, I had that moment where I thought, you know what, I've done with the cycle. It's, it's over. And I'm actually very, I feel very ready. I felt emotionally prepared for this new chapter. And that just quietly unfolded. 
it was not something that was spinning around in my head. It just became a realization in me. Mm -hmm. It just, I mean, like I said, I'm not speaking from experience, but I feel like from everything I have experienced that if you allow it, if you lean into it, if you, if you let it wash over you, if you don't fight it, if you learn yourself better and you learn that you have limitations and you try to lean into that and really prioritize. I mean, we didn't go into all the specific things that you can do for self-care, but generally speaking, I think that the listeners can gather that, you know, you just can't do all the things. You can't stay up all night. You can't drink all the coffee. You can't do all the exercise with none of the food and you can't do all of that stuff like you used to get away with. When you do that stuff, you see it in your cycle and it just magnifies during that time. So Mm -hmm. whereas before you would have seen it in your cycle, if you're 20 and you do some of the stuff, you still see it in your cycle. But when you're in your 40s, it's like, like, it's just no holds bar. Your cycles, your cycles also may be more bold. (laughs) Maybe your cycles also will bold bold that time during that time. So she's not putting up with that as, as (laughs) much, right? Like she used to put up with it, but now she's like, okay, all the blood, all the, like all the PMS. Okay. (laughs) Whatever it is. Um, (laughs) But yes, I I just want to just comment that, I mean, this conversation is the tip of the iceberg. There's so much here. But even in what we've talked about, I feel that it's such a wonderful experience for anybody who's listening, who has been worried and nervous and scared and thinks that this stage of life has to necessarily be awful. I think that what we've created is at least an alternative vision for that space and what it can be. So on that note, as we wrap up for the day, I would love for the two of you to share about your work and the programs that you have, where you are on socials, because I'm sure that many of the listeners are going to want to just dive right into your rabbit hole. Oh, great. It is It is a rabbit hole, actually. It's become, there's a lot to discover and explore. Thanks for asking, Lisa. So I'm, I'm thinking of anyone listening who is still currently cycling Really, the the practice is menstrual cycle awareness and to really learn how to care for your changing needs through the menstrual month. So we have a course upcoming on the 21st of June, six week online course called Cycle Power, which is going to be a really good deep dive into this and into the inner seasons of the cycle and learning the cyclical self-care practices of the cycle. So I highly recommend that. And then for anyone who is maybe in your late 40s or feel you're edging into this initiatory territory of menopause, we have a course in, it's actually, yeah, November this year and every year called Menopause the Great Awakener. And that's a six week online course where we go through the five phases of the menopause initiation to really understand that inner winter life stage and what's required through each facet of it, which is, of course, what we write about in our book, Wise Power. So those are the two courses on offer. And then we have a lovely uh, free offering, which for anyone who wants to just dip your toe in and get to know cycle awareness, it's called the Love Your Cycle course. And that's at redschool.net forward slash love, I believe. If it's not at love, let me know, R- write to us. But I think it's forward slash love. It's love. Yeah. And um, yeah, and on Instagram, we're at red.school as well. So um, those are good ways to connect with us as well as our, our books, which we've mentioned during this call. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I will make sure to link all of the, the places that the listeners can go, especially for those of you who are on the go. And I just want to thank the two of you. Every time we have a conversation, I love it. It's always like my favorite conversation. And then every new conversation, like, no, that was my favorite one. (laughs) So thank you for creating just such wonderful discourse around this, this time that causes so much grief and misunderstanding for so many women. Thank you, Lisa. And I bloody love what you're doing. And I love that we've had this connection over many years now. It's so good across the globe, across the ocean. It's really excellent. I I just loved it. I love what you're doing. I love this conversation, Lisa. It's just such fabulous work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, please share it with a friend. You'll find the show notes page for today's episode over at fertilityfriday.com slash 526. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode as much as I did. 
I love getting into this aspect of the menstrual cycle. I feel like it really deepens and kind of completes, if you will, the type of work that I do. I love focusing on the physical aspects, the biological aspects, the science, the research, you know, that's just where my brain goes. And that's what I, I feel like that has been my calling. And part of the reason that that aspect of it is so important to me and why I go so kind of crazy with the research in my books and my programs is because I always feel like as women, this has been denied to us for so long. We get barely any type of explanation about what's going on in our bodies. We try to seek support from medical practitioners who just basically tell us that, you know, trust me, I'm just going to give you this pill. Don't ask any questions. And if you start to ask questions and you start to look into things yourselves, you're you're kind of <laughs> shunned, you know, uh, what are you, Dr. Google, and you think you know everything kind of thing. The types of comments that women receive from their medical professionals when they try to educate themselves is just obscene. It's completely insane. So, you know, I feel like this has been my calling to dive into that research aspect of things and really distill it down into an easily digestible, understandable piece of information. And with that said, that's just not the whole story. So what I love about Alexandra and Shani's work is that it brings a full circle because I mean, you can have all of the kind of scientific understanding of it, but you still have to live in your body and experience the different emotional and energetic shifts that take place throughout your menstrual cycle and on a kind of larger scale throughout your reproductive life. And it is incredible if you think about it. So I have been living this and experiencing this for my entire adult life. I took the pill for a short time as, you know, high school, uh, when I was in high school and a little bit into post high school. But beyond that, I've just had the opportunity not just to have a menstrual cycle, but to be charting through that and to be aware of this whole piece of it that, you know, we've been highlighting on the podcast for so long. And it's incredible what you can learn about yourself when you harness the power of your cycle. So I certainly feel that our work is complimentary and I'm just so thankful that they're out there raising awareness and changing the conversation around menopause and perimenopause. Because everything that I, everything that you hear, if you think about all the messaging that you hear, whether it's the media, whether it's in TV shows, they're always showing this stereotypical woman having all of these symptoms. And this is just what to expect. There's nothing positive about it. They don't talk about it in any kind of positive way. And they really just talk about it as the end of something, as if you're shriveling up and dying and there's nothing beyond it. Yet when I see women who have gone through these stages, I see the incredible power, strength, and courage and all of these incredible traits magnified. <laughs> and so I've, I am so blessed to have been able to look at this stage positively. Now, I wouldn't say I'm excited in the sense that, you know, I want it to happen right away. I, I would like to go through the stage when it's the appropriate time and not a minute before, because I'm enjoying this stage of my life as well. But I do look forward to that stage. Because like I said in the interview today, if I'm already this bold and, you know, interesting, hopefully at this stage, then what's going to happen when my filter is removed? You know, what's going to happen when I step into that post menopause power? So I feel very thankful and very fortunate that, that I've been able to uh, develop a positive idea, positive just vision of, of what that next stage of life is going to be like. And I really hope that you know, even in part that today's conversation will, maybe you'll get there too. And maybe we can push back against all of the negative societal ideas of, about this stage. So as sometimes happens, this went a little longer uh, than I thought my little post ramble, but I hope that you enjoyed it. I also want to quickly, you know, if you've listened this long and you are a fan of the podcast, I would love to invite you to leave a review and a rating on Apple podcasts. That's one of the 
best compliments you can give me and one of the best ways that you can support the show. It really helps other people to find it and also helps them to know a little bit more about what they can expect to experience if they tune in. So I would really appreciate you leaving a review and rating on, on Apple Podcasts if you've been enjoying the show. And you'll notice that I waited until the end to say it. So if you're still listening to this point, this message is specifically for you because not everybody listens up until the end. So with that said, I hope you have a wonderful week, weekend, whenever you're tuning into the show. And of course, as always, until next time, be well and happy charting. If you enjoyed today's episode, you are going to love our new resource for women's health professionals, how to interpret virtually any chart your client throws at you. Our new ebook breaks down complex chart interpretation into an easy step-by-step process. Head over to fertilityfriday.com slash chart to snag your complimentary copy today. That's fertilityfriday.com slash chart.